Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the latest update, not only on this potential snowstorm, but what is coming around the corner. Because this cold air coming in is going to be a huge polar vortex disruption. Now, these usually last about a couple of weeks. Then it bounces back. Usually it gets elongated. Then it'll bounce back to its circular pattern. Sometimes these could happen twice where it could come down for another cold dip. But usually the second one will be weaker than the first one. So this is coming through late November into early December. And I'm still showing we have a good chance for all this tropical moisture to build up, get a tropical depression, maybe even still a tropical storm. Tony over here going towards Central America, then going out through the Eastern Pacific. Now you can see for the lower 48th that it is going to put you for the next 6 to 10 days, a big below average anomaly kicking in. Now there is a straight punch that's still going straight down towards Texas, towards Northern Mexico. This punch on the latest runs has been trending a little bit weaker. This is trending more of a South easterly push then towards midland and the northeast so the whole southern side all the way from louisiana towards northern florida and the carolinas you have a potential big freeze coming your way in very cold wind chills the wind chills is going to be the worst on this system and you can see when you go from the 8 to 14 days this does stick around could we stay in a certain pattern now this could potentially come around again after this but remember it will be weaker and it's not trending that it will happen it could warm right back up again matter of fact that's what i'm seeing that we will go potentially on a warm-up right after this if it happens again it will be very weak now you have a stable vortex all your air stays bottled up and it stays in a circular pattern but when you have a disrupted vortex this is where it gets elongated and you get these little fingers that pop out this is where you get a blocking pattern and it helps pull colder air down so you can see this best from here when you have your normal polar jet. It goes all the way around, but you can see the very cold air coming in with all these little fingers. Now, when you have a disrupted polar jet, this is where you get a block in high pressure, usually at northern Atlantic, and this pulls all those fingers down and you get a disruption this is where it gets elongated and it brings a colder air down this is also a positive on a pna pacific north american pattern this is also a negative on a nao a north atlantic pattern that's because it gets a block in high pressure and it puts that negative tilt on all this cold air so as we go through this we look at our na or north atlantic oscillation where i just showed you on that diagram when you get that block in high pressure and it gets into that negative you can see that we are still going into that negative late november into early december you can also see after that more than likely will not happen again after this first disruption if it does it'd be sometime from the 7th through the 10th and remember a second one would be weaker than the first you can see this also with the european showing we have that negative nao for late november early december on this cold blast that i've been updating you on and after that more likely will not be a second one a weaker one after this we will be going back to a little warm-up above average anomaly that's going to kick in so now when you look and see what comes with that blocking pattern you look at your arctic oscillation your ao your cold air to see if cold air is coming in with that you can see on the gfs that you do have cold air anomaly coming in with that blocking pattern so this is going to bring the cold air into the lower 48 and you can see it potentially for a second one to come through as well not showing as strong as the first one but it will be weaker if it does that's always the trend with these polar vortex disruptions that the second one if a second one it would be weaker than the first and even showing maybe even a even weaker one maybe later on for december and january just getting weaker and weaker you can see this also on the european the cold air coming through but you can see with the euro it's showing that we're going to go on that above average pattern that warm up and we're not going to get that second one you can see the dips up here not showing anything like we're about to get so to see this transition you go to your pna pattern your pacific north american pattern it lets us know if we're going to get a trough on the west coast and a high ridge towards the east coast opposite of this diagram and this one right here is a positive pattern so when you go into a positive pattern just like i showed you on that diagram you're going to get those above average temperatures along the west coast and that big dip of the cold air the below average temperatures along the center and the east coast that's a positive pna where you get that jet stream dipping on in so even though you don't see a dip you can see right here that you do get that positive pna 
end of November, beginning of December. So that means that that trough of cold air is going to continually come in as we go from the end of November into the beginning of December. Now that would be for the central and eastern side of the lower 48, while the west coast gets above average anomaly kicking in. And you can see after that, it goes back to the neutral to a little bit of a negative PNA. So the cold air will come back to the west coast and around this time is where that cold air on the east side will start pulling away. So you can see this when you look at your jet stream, you look at your winds and you can see it really goes towards that negative pattern. Don't go real deep towards Texas and the south central, you will get cooler air, but it's pivoting more towards the south east so now you got your jet stream coming on in bringing strong winds very cold temperatures all the way around and helping with some lake effect snow you can also see as you go into the beginning of december it stays in that pattern you see that we stay in that pattern all the way to the first few days of december then the pattern is going to change then we're going to go back on a potential warm-up or another potential cooler blast which would be a little bit weaker than the first one so when you look at your temperature anomaly you can see you as you move in for late november into early december as you go five days at a time it really bombs out towards the southeast and not towards the south central bringing those below average temperatures towards the mid-atlantic towards the Northeast, towards the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and not so much of that Southern push with the colder temperatures. You see how it does that for end November, beginning of December. So when you look a little bit closer, you see we get below average temperatures that still bomb down Texas, down towards Northern Mexico. This comes towards the end of November. This is right beginning where we start to have our thanksgiving cold front coming through now all these temperatures are all at 850 millibars i'll show you the two meter temperatures but you can also see that after the initial bombing towards texas and mexico it shoots more towards the mid-atlantic the southeast ohio valley the great lakes and that's even colder as it comes in for the beginning of December. So real quick, so you can see what to expect as you go into Thursday, you're going to have the 20 degree temperature start coming further into lower 48, all the way towards Kansas, all the way across the northern half of the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the intercoastal northeast. Now, if you take a look, you'll see that the freezing temperatures right here for the northern half of the Ohio Valley, intercoastal northeast, this is where you have a chance to get some snow, but unfortunately, it's going to warm back up throughout the day. I'll show you. Now, wind chills are going to move in very fast for Thursday and beyond, bringing everyone very cold. And we even have the negative 15 and below temperatures, wind chill just moving in. Now, as you go into Friday, the 20 degree temperatures are moving further towards the southern side, all the way to Oklahoma, all the way towards Kentucky and the northeast. And the wind chills, once again, is going to be the most unbearable part about this transition. This is going to bring teens, even 20s, down towards Texas. This is not your temperatures. This is wind chills. But it's really going to be brutal for the upper Midwest. Now, as you go into Saturday, you can see it's going to start transitioning and pivoting towards the mid-Atlantic, but it's still going to stay frozen for everyone else. And as you go towards the wind chills, now you see it's coming down day after day. We're going to get a week of this, maybe two weeks. Now, as you go to Sunday, here's the freezing temperatures again. You got the 20s rolling through. You got the wind chills coming all the way down, all the way down towards the deep south, feeling like you're in the 20s, where everyone else feels like they're in teens to negative 20 degree wind chills passing through. Now, here you are from Monday. This is where it pivots a little more into December. This is December 2nd. This is where it stays more on that southeasterly and into the mid-Atlantic. So now you got 20s potentially coming down towards you. So make sure you're ready for these temperatures. This is still going to be a pipe bursting cold anomaly coming through with your wind chills. Now you got the negative wind chills moving through 15 and 20 and above all the way through the upper Midwest now. Bringing the teen temperature wind chills across the center of the lower 48 and across the southern side of lower 48, bringing those 20 degree wind chills. But this is where everything changes. Because now Tuesday, because now you have these very cold temperatures coming across the deep south, the midlands, the northeast, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the center, and the north central. A lot of very cold temperatures swinging through. Now with your wind chills, once again, this is going to be very bad and very brutal as you go through Tuesday morning. Now it's bringing those 20s down again all the way into northern Florida with your wind chills feel like you're in the 20s to 30s but it's spreading those single digits all the way across the Ohio Valley to Great Lakes and the northeast and those negative wind chills still staying around the upper Midwest 
Here you go for Wednesday. It comes down again with those freezing temperatures. Here you are with your wind chills. Once again, very brutal for Wednesday. And the single digits staying around the Ohio Valley, the North Central, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. Now, Thursday, this is where it starts doing a transition. This is where you start getting a little bit of above average. You get a little bit of a warm-up on the western side of the lower 48. Still very cold, but the freezing temperatures are still going to bomb towards the southeast and the whole eastern side of the lower 48. And the wind chills are still going to be very brutal. Now, as you pull by for Thursday, maybe it's going to start warming up again as you go through Thursday evening and Friday. Everything else is going to be mellow. This could come down again. Remember, this happens usually a couple of weeks at a time. This one would be weaker if it does come down. Now this snowstorm, so far all we have is an outlook for a slight risk for heavy snowfall in all this purple region from the 30th through the 3rd of December. A lot of this is gonna be lake effect snow. And just like I told you a couple of days ago, this potential Thanksgiving snowstorm in the least is gonna create big problems. So the timing of this low pressure and they're getting these warm temperatures and you're getting this snow across Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, it's not much of a good chance of snowfall. There there's only a 40% chance of some mix as it goes into rain as you go into Thursday morning, but it's still uncertainty of what's going on with that snowstorm. I'm showing it's going to move over late. It's going to be too warm. It could come over at nighttime, but it's going to warm right back up. Plus, remember, this cold air is coming down right around 27th and the 28th. So whether it meets up with the precipitation is not quite clear. But you do see as it goes into the beginning of December, this is where the cold air stays the longest. So if you do get some snow in the northeast, more likely will stay there because all this warm up will be leaving and you'll be in a cold anomaly for quite some time. Show on to Ural, you can still see that we get still get some precipitation along the west coast still as we go through this week and we don't quite get any snow for what's passing by with that short wave trough maybe northern minnesota northern wisconsin the up of michigan as that swings across for monday bring some rainfall for tuesday across the northeast but then that second trough is coming through from the west bringing heavier snow for the higher elevations of colorado utah maybe a little bit of nevada as well but you see as that comes across for wednesday into thursday showing is going to be chances for snow this is at midnight so some of this is going to turn into snowfall but if you watch as it goes through you see how you get snow on the northern half of the ohio valley the great lakes and the intercoastal northeast as you go into the morning see how this turns into snow a lot of rain for everyone else we see how that turns into snowfall it's just too warm for this to go along the corridor now you go into the afternoon, it's just too warm. So snow will fall, whether it accumulates. I think you'll see it in the higher elevations. I think it's going to warm up for everyone else. It'll be in the grass, but not really on the streets. That's going to warm up. Lake effect snow just adding up over and over and over. It's not a big snowstorm coming after that. It's just going to be all these colder winds going across these warmer lakes, creating a lot of lake effect snow. Now you can see with the GFS, as you go into Thursday, as you're going into your Thanksgiving, that as we go into the morning, we have the cooler air coming through, but then you're going to get your snowstorm through the morning. So you can see your temperatures as you go through early in the morning. So northern half of Indiana, Ohio, even some of Michigan possibly, and the intercoastal northeast, you can see snow fall down overnight. Now as you look for your daytime highs, Look how it warms right back up again throughout your day. So that is going to melt. Now, if it came down on Friday, more people will be in the freezing conditions. So it all depends if it comes in for Thursday or if it really sticks around for that Friday pivoting the Northeast. You can tell your freezing temperatures stick around. But when you look for your highs for the day for Friday also, it warms right back up, everybody. You can also see this with the Ural. So here you are going into Thursday morning. Not a lot of cold temperatures. It's showing even less than what GFS showing. It won't be that snowstorm. And as you go more towards Friday, that the colder air is going to pivot towards Ohio Valley, the intercoastal northeast, to where you could get that snow buildup. But once again, your highs are going to warm right back up again for friday you can see this transition when you look through the model data so as you look with the zero z this comes in two o'clock in the morning you can see as it comes across ohio valley the great lakes intercoastal northeast showing it could bring a good swath of snow and it's 
coming in on a warm up, but it's coming in overnight, so it gets heavier and heavier. Now, when you look with the latest update, the 60 that just come out this morning, you can see this is actually going down a good bit. It's just too warm, and the transition is coming later and later, and it's only showing snow right where we just had snow for northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and for New England and the higher elevations. All along the coast, you're not going to get anything but rain. You can see the same thing with GFS. So it showed that snowstorm coming in. Also showed it going to be later too warm for Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Latest update this morning showed it's just going to be too warm, period. And there's not going to be no snow. Just a little bit of lake effect snow that's going to start adding up lake effect snow and then try and find a third one for a trend you can see with the canadian also agreeing that it is going to be very weak it's going to be warm it's going to come in overnight but it's going to warm up and you're just going to get rainfall higher elevations could see some snow the best places to get snow in my opinion is going to be maine vermont new hampshire and upstate new york everyone else is going to see it, it might even add up in your grass but i do believe it will warm up and wash away also still showing that we might get tropical depression tony that could turn into a tropical storm tony and go towards central america as you go through this transition big high pressure of cold air coming in blocking everything so this would be unreal in the first place we'll get late november early december name storm in the caribbean this is crazy and in the least bit it's gonna bring y'all heavy rainfall i will keep you updated and you can see the latest update on our potential velocity anomaly as wild that we are even still looking at this so as we go towards the end of december into january i'm still showing that we're going into favorable environment everyone we could have storms brewing right back up now that is the latest forecast if this has helped you understand what is coming around the corner and what we're about to go into please think of others share this information on other social media platforms i'm sure you hear it from other youtubers as well if you think this is important enough to share please share it now before i go real quick john 10 22 through 30 and it was at jerusalem the feast of the dedication and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I'll keep you updated. All these temperatures are pivoting towards the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. So make sure y'all are ready for these very cold temperatures, for these freezes that come on, especially up there in North Carolina. Please make sure you check on your neighbors and everyone around y'all. This is going to be pretty rough. All glory goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.